Welcome to the Wally Show Aftercast. Those things we did not get to during the course of the show today. We've got to talk a little Halloween uh, from last night. Uh, and uh, kind of like, I know that Halloween inside of Christian circles really messes with some people and they get really uh, angry with other people that don't share that same fear of the holiday, <laughs> you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, like we had our pastor come in and he was talking about uh, one of our other stations and how this lady had posted uh, pictures of her and her kids for Halloween and then they just got flamed like how dare you post pictures of your children and celebrate the devil's holiday kind of thing. You're like wow that took a turn. Like (laughs) I I never understood where we got to that point during Halloween when I was a kid we always had you know the people that had to do the scary costumes and the serial killers fine you got that that's you, you're going to have that but when i was a kid it literally was wow i'm going to dress up as a football player and i'm going to yep. go get buckets of candy this is amazing well, because back then and that makes you sound old but back then i don't think it's serial killers were glorified or there wasn't many movies about people well, we, dying. we still had we still had like dressing up as scary things they did have that like nightmare on elm street was a big thing when i was mm-hmm. younger and stuff so they did have it but my mom's rule was like absolutely not mm-hmm. and truth is i didn't want to go as that stuff i'm scared of it. uh <laughs> you know and so like i get it's kind of like christmas you have people that uh celebrate just the commercial side of christmas as santa claus and then you've got believers who celebrate only faith in Christ and nothing else. But then you've got people that sit in the middle that are like, I can still believe in Jesus and celebrate the birth of our Savior while opening presents. And it's okay. The two worlds can exist and no one, and it's not like you've sold your soul to the devil. The commercialized stuff does not have to be inherently like vilified. Right. I guess like it's not, it's not inherently vilified. Like candy, great. Presents, fun. Like that's that's what they that's what they can be, and that's yeah. like it's all up to us to choose that. Mike Donahue posted about this on his Instagram. I listened to it a little bit. I didn't get the whole gist of it, right? Um, but pretty much, he was just welcoming an open, acceptable comment section. But he was saying that he dressed up as that. He creepy, went as Gollum. Okay. Oh, yeah, cool. that guy. Because he does um, a Gollum impersonation. He does. <laughs> but he was saying that this is why he participates in it in uh, Halloween, and. He was also saying if you do a lot of research, I guess Christmas is a pagan holiday as right, well. But we right. don't we don't accept that or whatever. But we do accept that Halloween is a is is pagan all around. And it's like right. and so I think his gist was pretty much like we can do both. We don't need to give Satan too much power, but then again, we don't need to just ignore him either. It's like how you can do yoga without worshiping Hindu gods. Oh, yeah. You know, like you can stretch your body in a way that just helps you be in better health, but you don't have to believe in, you know, all of the Eastern mysticism that goes with it. Like, I, I think it's just a matter of being a rational, normal adult. Yeah, but I think that there are process. some people that say, well, where do you draw the line? Sure. And, and that makes sense, too. Like, where do you draw the line? But here's the thing. Everybody has a different line. Mm-hmm. And, and you have to give people space to have that line, you know, and, and have their own line, even though it's different than your line. Uh, it, was just, it was just weird. But now, speaking of lines, I definitely have the lines that were instilled in me. Like, last night, we were driving home, and I watched a family with a skipping Wonder Woman, eight-year-old daughter, you know, kind of thing, just love and life. Then the parents had costumes on them or what they had, and then they had a little serial killer behind them in a Jason mask, you know, and you're like, is uh, me, I look at that very judgmentally, and I go, what parent says, oh, yeah, this is a good idea. Let's glorify this, you know, murder character and let my child, my eight-year-old child be this. Like, I think that's messed up, honestly. But then again, I don't live in that world where horror movies are like just a movie to me. I think well, they're, you know. Well, I think it's in the same ballpark of like parents who kind of struggle with letting their kids play like let's say shooter games because yeah. that's yeah. just inherently letting your kid like if you let your 11 year old kid play call of duty sure. you're just letting him go and shoot people and they've made that an entertainment factor mm-hmm. right and too you've said before in the past like you can't expect christian um characteristics from someone someone who isn't saved Absolutely. the same True. could be said for parents who are more 
are not believers, you know, and they raise their children differently. You can't expect something different. Exactly. I think that's where it's weird, though. Like, there are some things that, regardless of take faith out of it, you're like an eight year old being a serial killer oh, just feels twisted. weird to me, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, I, I like, and again, like the people on the corner of our uh, neighborhood who have the ginormous. Halloween display with you know a bunch of skeletons. I mean, they're over twenty something skeletons now, and and lights, and you, and they do what people do for Christmas, where you like watch the lights and turn to a radio uh, signal. They do that for their Halloween. I mean, it's it's next level. But then last night there was a grip of people all out in front of their thing, taking pictures and hanging out, and they're probably like super nice people. That's uh, like that's the thing. Mm-hmm. So I know I'm I know I'm being judgy on it for sure. Like I probably should have gone over and like uh, stopped and talked to them. That's some fun. And yeah, because they probably are like really nice, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, they just, that's They'd be their more thing. acceptable at that time than they would at any time else. You yeah. Know, having a stranger come and talk to them. Yeah, for sure. So I don't know. It was just, it was just kind of a, a interesting night. We went and saw a movie instead of uh, trick or treating. Like, I don't like handing out candy. And I know I sound like the Why? old curmudgeon because I don't like the teenage kids that don't put any oh. effort in. I love the little kids. Like, if you could just trick or treat for little kids, like, I'm Dora the Explorer, you know, and like, oh, great. You're so cute. Ah. But it's the kids are like trick or treat, you know, and then they just they, they don't put any effort in and they just don't care. You should have a different candy bowl for them. That's a, a broccoli bowl. <laughs> like that's a great idea. Yeah, just, or just have a full of candies that you know they're not going to like, like, like almond. Yeah. yeah, almond joys. And stuff. <laughs> I do like that. Yeah, like <laughs> that's a, a great idea. like trick or treat. Hang on a second. <laughs> you I got go get the other bowl. I do mm-hmm. like that. We've turned it into our tradition is going to a movie on uh, Halloween because my wife doesn't like handing out candy either. Last year, my mom was uh, still staying with us, and she loved it. Like, she handed out candy. She was bummed there weren't more people uh, that stopped by, but I'm like, nope. So we went to a movie. We saw the movie Till. Uh, This is the story from 1955 of a 14-year-old black kid that he was at a um, little grocery store there and kind of whistled at the white lady that was working behind Presumably. the counter. Yeah, the, the, that's those the facts are kind of there. This mm-hmm. is a, a real story. Uh and so that is what came out and he was drugged from his aunt and uncle's home and was murdered and the, the lynching and the beating and just a, a horrific story. It was heavy. Like it was a heavy story. Um but it was really well done. Mm-hmm. Um and so we go to this movie and we watch it. it. And from a movie standpoint, it's a little slow, um, you know, just from the storytelling part of it. But it, it, it's done really well. And the thing at the the crazy part of it is at the end of the movie. I always love real stories where they kind of stop the movie just wherever they stop it at that time, and then they put up facts mm-hmm. about it. And you're like, oh wow, wow. This one had facts that just floored me. My wife and I sat there like, you have got to be kidding me. So the two men that were accused of abducting him, I, can I, I, I'll, let me say spoiler alert in case you're going to go see it. Yeah, uh, I, I and was reading read all it. about it on Wikipedia. Okay, yeah. in case you haven't read it. So you've had ample time to check out for a minute. So the thing that pops up at the end, the two men that were accused and acquitted of killing him years later got paid $4,000 to do an interview with Look Magazine where they admitted that they killed him. And went into detail about what yeah. they did. And it and it didn't matter because they had already been tried. So I guess they figured you can't like be tried. Jeopardy. Exactly. Can't be tried for the same mm-hmm. crime twice. So uh, they get away scot-free and they just thumb their nose at the system, basically. Yeah shocking, jarring that that can happen in our society. That's the blessing and the curse of our legal system, you Mm -hmm. know? And then it goes even further than that. Um, Like, so finally, his mom had campaigned for years for racial change and things like that. And finally, the U.S. House of Representatives passed the Emmett Till Anti-Lynching Act with an overwhelming bipartisan vote of 422 to 3, which you have to go three. What did you three do? Or was there something else tacked onto the bill they didn't like? Mm-hmm. I don't know. Uh, this legislation, because uh, this was 1955 that this happened, this legislation uh, was enacted in the House of Representatives this year in March. 
like this year it fight like it's like it wasn't a federal crime to lynch anybody all this time and so they finally made it you know what this federal crime is kind of a hate crime let's not do that <laughs> like it's crazy that it took that many years and this many people to to die you know and mm-hmm. and, and and other people that fought for equality to pass away like his mom and never see this stuff mm-hmm. come to fruition but one thing i read too was that she decided that they were like he because he was brutally beaten yeah and, and horribly disfigured but she decided that she wanted to have an open casket yep. for him and because she wanted it, it she didn't want to hide what is happening to African Americans back in that day and so I think that that had a full effect on Wikipedia it definitely that, had an effect yeah and on, on Wikipedia it said hundreds I think maybe thousands showed up and I can't imagine walking up to a coffin and mm. seeing something like that it would definitely be a rude awakening at first I thought they were going to not show it like because they the, the beating part of him they kind of from a cinematic standpoint stayed out of the barn and you just hear it kind of thing and mm-hmm. so I'm like okay so now they're going to avoid showing it but then they didn't then they showed they uh, my assumption is too that they had seen the regular pictures and they tried to make it emulate it to look like what had happened to him because it was it was unconscionable like Mm -hmm. you couldn't even recognize him you know Mm -hmm. and so it was yeah it was it was it was a rough movie but it was my wife sitting there crying throughout it and stuff like that because at the end we were just talking we're like i can't believe people could be that inhumane to other people you know there's one sheriff in this movie he he oh my gosh he's a great actor and you hate him instantly. Those are the best for kind the, of actors. Yeah, for the way that he uses the N-word and his disdain and his disregard for people, you're like, if you're on that set, I'm sure he every t- time was like, I'm so sorry about this, mm-hmm. you know, but I'm going to nail this. And he did. He nailed white Southern racism like it to a T. And he was great at it, but you're like, oh, I do not like you. It's a weird part of like acting I think because I was watching an interview with Jamie Foxx and it was him and Leonardo DiCaprio for the movie Django yeah, which don't, yeah. don't recommend in no, general no, per no. Se. Not that has something, a lot of bad yeah, words no, no recommendation there but they were discussing that and how Leo felt uncomfortable saying that word and how Jamie looked at him and he was like hey man this is Tuesday for us right. like this is just your job that's like I can't imagine like getting to a I don't, I don't think they ever should get to that point of feeling comfortable i'm i'm assuming my daughter was in a performance um with like the nashville rep and it was racially based and oh, they really? brought in like a counselor to Ooh. be on the set with them during uh rehearsals and during the process of it in case anyone was having trouble processing it or you know was I hate to use the word triggered by it, but like was was affected by mm-hmm. it, you know, and like, oh, that's, I wouldn't have thought of that. Uh, but yeah, those things, they, they, yeah, they have weight. What was what was interesting, too, was there was my wife and I and one other couple behind us that were in the movie theater. No one else in the movie theater, just these two couples. And I had seen them walk in, but I was face deep in a bucket of popcorn. <laughs> uh, so I didn't I didn't really see them and it was dark. And then so as we're leaving, though. Uh, I see them come out too, and it was a black couple. And I couldn't help but think what they felt of this movie, you know, and what mm-hmm. I felt of this movie. And obviously, it hit us all very deeply, but I'm sure it hit them far deeper than than mm-hmm. than me, even. Mm-hmm. You know, like I can just empathize or, or sympathize, but they probably have people and stories in their lives of of racial discrimination and real stuff because they were an older couple um you know which made this extremely real my only thought in this too was like it was funny because as we were leaving they were ahead of us and they're in that awkward space where he goes to hold the door and we were farther enough behind where he could have let it go without you know it being uh oh that was rude um but he stayed and held the door for me and so i kind of sped up because i hate when people just walk slumberly lumberly when you do that so i sped up and i and i uh uh got the door for my wife then i'm like oh cool thanks sir i appreciate that you know respect and Mm -hmm. stuff like that um but it was one of those things that as you watch this movie and we already have so much race racial issues in our society still now have they gotten better from the 50s and 60s absolutely but is it still a mess 100 percent. you my hope is that somebody that comes from a different perspective like someone who's african-american watches this and can see it for what it is and goes i'm glad it's not like that but then doesn't walk out of there going yeah it entrenches that hate hatred mm-hmm. of white people, you know, because I walked out of there feeling horrible about this. You know, it wasn't like I'm like, yeah, 
yeah, this is great. You know, I, I mean, like, I'm disgusted by it. Mm-hmm. And I hope that people, when they go see this, realize that there are a ginormous, overwhelming majority of white people that will see this movie and be just as horrified mm-hmm. as you, or maybe even embarrassed at like what our race did and our culture. It is you know, embarrassing. Did. Yeah, I mean, it seriously is. Like, I wonder, like Germans with Hitler, like how much is their embarrassment for that guy? You know, and and that was their culture, you know, kind of thing. And so, but yeah, I was. So my hope is that as we try to mend racial things, and these are important stories, that it doesn't have the adverse effect where it actually drives a wedge even further mm-hmm. as you learn the horrific nature of these things. So anyway, that was my that was my Halloween. Happy Halloween. <laughs> it, was, it was heavy, man. It was heavy. Uh, Lady Rock, what do you got? I have a creepy story, or maybe cool. I'm not sure. It depends on what you think about it. There's a family that recently lost their dog. It was a golden retriever. It lived a long and happy life. Um, but instead of bear Burying him or having him cremated, they turned him into a bearskin rug. Oof. So I saw no. the video, no. the picture of it. Um, like I think it's bad when people like stuff their dogs, and mm-hmm. like, like I think that's bad enough. But making it into a rug feels yeah super weird. Yeah, it was a taxidermy who posted a video of the finished product on Instagram. <laughs> uh, he said the family wanted him preserved as a pelt, and no. that he was quote finally ready to head home. Um, uh, I mean, the, the, when you see it, the fur is soft. I mean, you can pet it. It's just weird because the face is still there. Uh, and so you see the sockets where the eyes are supposed yeah. to be. And there's the paws are still there. The tail is still there. Uh, there's a mix of comments on it. Like reactions are some are p- saying, oh, that's a great idea. And others are being like, no. that's way too creepy. Um, I personally wouldn't like that. It would just, it would feel like, I, yeah, it's like I, your I, best, It's like someone yeah, who's like you, you know your your friend it makes for them, ten plus like years. You, I think what it is is that if you have their pelt, right, whatever, it reminds you or it leaves you with that vision of them. And you're that walking they're, on that them. They're, well, yeah. I don't. I can't see them using it as a rug. Yeah. I can't see them doing that. But I it it reminds you. It's like it leaves you with the picture of like this is how they look dead. Yeah, where in. If you got them cremated or buried, you'd be left with the image in your mind yeah. of them in a good space, yeah. you know. I, but this would be a reminder that mm. I like the companies that'll do like stuffed animals. Like if you get like a stuffed animal of like, oh, my dog passed away, and oh, oh you yeah. know, stuffed animal that looks really close to them, like that's mm-hmm. super sweet. But mm-hmm. yeah, that idea that the body or parts of their body is just like in your yeah. home still has and like I, a, a horror and factor. I've to even me. seen some people take like fur from their animal and they'll place it into a stuffed animal or something. Yeah. And and that's okay. Yeah. But um, I, I had a portrait done <laughs> of Hank for Marty. It's a good memory. This lady, she's an amazing art- artist, and our friends had done this, so I got their name from them and uh, had it done, and it's in our house now. And like, mm-hmm. I was like, it was cool. Like, I like that. But like, I could never. Well, I guess I could make oven mitts out of him. That'd be pretty great. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Well or do them inside oh. out so like the fur is there and it's really warm. Oh, no. <laughs> like <That's>... moccasins. <laughs> oh, he's a cat. He didn't have much fur. Uh, so oh. yeah, that'll work. So, all right. Hey, uh, with that, let's do some birthdays. <laughs> hey. bu- 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 birthdays. We have no birthdays. Oh. We have no birthdays. <laughs> bu- 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 birthdays. End on the heaviness. Um, we could. I could take a question if you like. Okay. Is it happy? Please. Yeah. Oh, good. Uh, a- Avalyn. Avalyn. Not sure. Would like to know if you were tiny for a day, what would you do? Mm, that's interesting. Did you ever see the movie? Oh, well, honey, there's I one. Shrunk the kids. There, yeah, see, yeah. There's honey, another I one blew called up the kids. Inner Space too. But yeah, Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. Like I always thought that was fascinating. They used to have a world at Disney World uh, that was the Honey, I Shrunk the Kids Land, and so everything was oversized and you were tiny. I thought that was kind of cool. Mm-hmm. But yeah, what would you do? I would definitely, I would definitely uh, spy on people and hear what they were saying about me. Yeah. Like, I'm super paranoid. You are so yeah. Yeah, there's yeah, for sure. There's something broken. Like Ant Man. Oh, absolutely. Like if you could, like if you're just like, it's a risky thing because you could hear something you don't want to hear. Oh, you're gonna hear things you don't want. Absolutely. Hear. And so, like, do and you, you want to get hurt? Earmuffs because it's gonna be loud. Mm-hmm. Even their That's whispers good are point. hurt yeah. your ears. I think I'd be too scared to be a bug or like a tiny for a day because yeah. I didn't encounter bugs in like their oh, g- ginormity that's true. I never thought to me. That. So I would just reject this idea. They'd be entirely. like dinosaurs to you. Yeah. yeah. Rock, me. what would you do if you were little? That's a great like question. Like tiny for a day. 
I'm thinking. I'm not really sure. Like how many? A part of me says I'd like to put myself in a balloon mm. and just see where I go. Like a helium yeah. balloon? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but then again, if that thing pops and I fall, I'm done for. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But it's like ants can fall from like crazy heights and they live. It's the That's weirdest true. thing. Maybe Because their bodies don't weigh much. Yeah. Maybe I would make it. If you fell know. on a rug, you'd probably be fine. Or grass. Would that be yeah. soft enough for yeah. me? Maybe it would. I'm not sure. We'll never yeah. know. Yeah. I think I know what I would do. Now I know what I would do. Okay. Thought yeah. about it. I would go inside Betty Rock's ear oh and, and and just drive her nuts all day. Because <laughs> like you, you get something in your ear, you're like, I can't get it out. And then I just be like, Betty Lucifer. <laughs> like <laughs> I'm going crazy. Yeah, exactly. Good like times. totally gaslight her. Totes. Yeah, that'd be good. Good times. All right. Well, there you go. That's gonna do it for your aftercast for today. And as always, thanks for being a potty.